Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This guy over here is Tim, and welcome back to Second Legacy. Today's episode, we are going to dive in. There's some great stuff coming out. It's going after the NFA. The GOA is on board, but is it really going to make an impact? Does it have the teeth? And that is what we are going to talk about. Now, if you are a new returning viewer, please consider hitting that subscribe button, liking the video, and turning that notification bell on. We need as much help as we can to get this collaboration going as far and as fast as we can, because we think you can make a true difference for the Second Amendment and passing it on to the next generation. And with that, I'm going to introduce, throw it over to Tim really quickly, say what we're going to hit on, and then we're going to read some press releases to inform you and break down what's actually going on and how this affects you at the end of the day. So, Tim, what are we going to talk about? So today, let's talk about the introduction of the SHORT Act, which is Stop Harassing Owners of Rifles Today. you got to love how Congress comes up with a, a, a word, a catchy word, and then they try to come up with you know ways to, to come up with words that align with the acronym oh, yeah. that they just produced, right? Like SHORT Act, so Stop Harassing uh, owners of rifles act. today, you know, it's it, they're pretty good at it. They're pretty good at oh, it. Oh, they're incredible. Or dream <laughs> so, yeah. This act was introduced by Congressman Andrew Clyde of Georgia and then Senator Roger Marshall uh, of Kansas. Mm -hmm. And um, and basically the bill is, is to remove uh, the unconstitutional taxation, registration, regulation uh, in the National Firearms Act of short-barreled rifles, short-barreled shotguns, and those classified as AOWs or any other weapons. So great idea. I mean, this this mm -hmm. this really really sounds good. This has the full weight of the GOA behind it. They 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 are the ones that issued the press release that you're looking at now. And um, it, the only problem I see with this is just like we spoke about in a previous video, poor timing, guys. So what's the purpose, right? So mm -hmm. they they may have the votes for it in the House. They will not have the votes for it in the Senate. And then you have the you know, dude sitting in the White House at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue who has the uh, the veto stamp, and I can guarantee you it will not make it across his, net, his desk. He is no. not going to do anything pro-gun, and he certainly isn't going to do anything that would detooth the NFA, in my opinion. What, do you, what are your thoughts on this one? Oh, no, no, I 100% agree with you. I think your, your initial sentiments not only are based in legitimate fact. I think there's going to have a lot of resonance with a lot of the viewers. Leave it in the comments field below if you guys agree with so far what he's what Tim just laid out. But there's some things here that are interesting and I think it's incredibly important to dive into. For example, one of the things that I fully believe is when Republican congressmen do good things for our second amendment rights, applaud it. Absolutely. I'm not going to tear something down before it goes anywhere. However, I do question the timing. And now GOA is jumping right behind it. I've seen good things from GOA, so I know that they have good intent behind this. And as you mentioned in the initial the initial press release, you've got two different people. You've got Senator Roger Marshall from Kansas, and then you've got Congressman Andrew Clyde from Georgia. Now, these are great things, and they should be lauded for their accomplishments. However, there's also an underlying piece here, because while it's incredibly important to put forth pro-gun legislation, it's also important to see those exact same things when we actually have the capacity to make them a reality. So like I said, just to reiterate, I'm not going to cut it out, cut its legs out from under it, but also at the exact same time, I'm also going to go, where was this when we had full majorities versus the minority where we sit now? And I'm, I'm going to go through a few quotes here in a second, but that's kind of my initial thoughts. And if Tim, you have no, um, no opposition, I'm going to read the next statement from the GOA's uh, senior vice president. Yeah, go ahead. Cool. Mr. Producer, this is number two. This is from Eric Pratt. This is from the press relief. G release. GOA's senior vice president issued the following statement, quote, tens of millions of Americans are facing felony charges if they fail to comply with his executive fiat from the Biden administration. This is the biggest gun grab in the history of our country, and we are fully committed to fighting this executive order at every turn. Now, I love that statement. That's an incredibly acute, very points directly to this, the core part of the issue, because at in the back of the, the back of the room, we've got the ATF pistol brace, which this probably was spurred upon. Doing to be honest, probably the catalyst. Oh yeah, yeah. But Actually, again, so I should have I should have clarified at the beginning. Uh, I didn't completely read the original statement. Uh, this was released to coincide with the uh, pistol brace being basically the the new rule being posted to the uh, the Federal Register, and so now that is actually a thing as of today of this recording, which is the 31st of January, 2023. And so this announcement, this bill was purposely released to coincide with this ATF rule change, and it very much has to do with that. So uh, that, that puts Eric's comments more into perspective. 
Yeah, no, it absolutely does. So, so then we go back to the statement. It makes total sense. You're going and you're responding from the ATF overreach, from the you know the interpretation, all the stuff we talked about on different videos. And I promise we will talk about it again. But you go back to the core, the crux of the problem. Is this going to fix the issue, or is this a statement? And this is putting something out there which we can revisit at a different time. And that's, I think, I mean, Tim, this is the part we're probably going to set up camp on for a second, but that's a frustration gun owners have had across the board. When you have full majorities for the Republicans in the Senate, the House, and you have the presidency, you might not see this type of action, including Dan Crenshaw's bill to curtail the power of the ATF. But when you don't have it, when you have the minorities, these bills seem to fly out like water. What do you think? I mean, what am I off on that? What do you, what's your perspective? Yeah, wasn't it Getz or somebody that, that introduced the, you know, get rid of the ATF Act? Uh -huh. And then we had, yep. so so we're, we're seeing all the, the, this flurry of of bills that we as gun owners would love to see passed, right? I would love nothing more than to see this act passed. But there's, I have two problems with this currently. Mm -hmm. First of all, where are the silencers? They're talking about short barrel shotguns, short barrel rifles, and any other weapons. Why do we just suddenly forget about silencers? So if if you bring up slide number four, Mr. Producer, to, to show... Um, the ASA or the, uh, this is an organization that was founded to basically get suppressors off the registry. They had introduced a bill back in 2017, the Hearing Protection Act, to get suppressors off the registry. Sadly, Vegas happened soon thereafter, and then any political capital that they may have had to get it passed, which it really did seem like we were going to get it passed. I mean, I, I can't emphasize strongly enough how close we actually came to getting this passed. Then Vegas happened, and then all the politicians do is what politicians do. They run scared. Nobody wants to touch it. We wouldn't see it again really in earnest. There would be other attempts uh, you know, later introduced, but I think the Shush Act of 2021 was probably the closest you know, we came to another attempt at trying to get something done. But once again, you know, a little late to the party, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, by 21 there's no chance of it passing the house, the Senate. Well, maybe the house, there's no chance the Senate or getting across Biden's desk. Right. So that that's one problem I have with this. And then we have the second problem, which we addressed with the Dan Crenshaw bill. And that is why now again, maybe in the house, definitely not the Senate and certainly not the president. So uh, it, 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 in terms of getting it passed, getting it signed and all that good stuff. So why are they doing this? Is, is this political mm -hmm. malfeasance? Is this people just, throwing stuff out there to fundraise for the 2024 campaign. Is this what we discussed previously, where let's just get it in the public conversation now. So when we do actually have a chance at getting this passed, we've you know talked about it. We've, we've refined the bill. We've you know, gone around and knocked on doors. We've got enough support in the halls of Congress to get this thing done now in 24. Is this that first baby step? Or is this just another, hey, look at me, uh, you know, we, the Republicans right. are doing something and pandering to the gun community when they have no intention of pushing this post 24, should they gain control of, you know, the house Senate and the white house. And again, that just political malfeasance, this is either just grossly incompetent or this is a fundraiser or this has a strategy behind it that, you know, we've previously discussed. So which is yep. it? I honestly don't know. Right. Well, so I'm going to throw out a hypothetical for you before we go to the next statement we're going to cover. So if you'll recall, Tim, last year we had a heck of a time on all of our YouTube channels talking about assault weapons ban that were going through, the ones that passed the House but they didn't pass the Senate, the ones that Biden wanted and he kept on pushing for, but again, they still stalled in the Senate because the filibuster held. You've got, if you recall, you had the 1,000% tax on ARs bill. That one came out. That was a fun one. You had the raising of age to 21 for any, air quotes, assault weapon. That was a fun one. Didn't go anywhere. You had the assault weapons ban itself. You had lots of different things, magazine capacities. But it was almost like they were throwing so many things at the wall that they knew weren't going to happen. I mean, at the exact same time, you had Chris Murphy saying openly, there aren't the votes for that. Uh, we covered it on my channel, Langley Outdoors, all the time. He was saying it consistently. Um, oh, what is that guy? John Cornyn, same thing. So while they were still working on their own little variation of gun control, which turned out to be the Bipartisan Safety Commun Safer Communities Act, that's what we were dealing with on this level. So I ask again, when you're looking at the Senate right now, Feinstein just reintroduced her assault weapons ban when they have Republicans control the House. Is this something that both parties just do to string us along? And if so, 
I don't care if the Democrats do it to the Democrat followers who are for gun control. What I do care about is actually delivering the promises that Republicans have made for our Second Amendment rights, because that kind of goes back to an underlying issue we said many times. It doesn't feel like much of a conversation if both parties are not gaining anything, and you've said it a few times. And I think drawing the comparison between what the Democrats have done in recent memory and what I'm starting to see Republicans do with, gu with pro-gun legislation, I don't want to be in the same position as the Democrats are when they're disappointed because none of it happens. And I think shows like this and other channels can actually move that in a forward direction. Now, that's my own personal opinion. Let me throw the last quote out here for you guys, and then we'll kind of tie it all together because it's a good tie into what Tim just said. Mr. Producer, if you could hit number three. Aiden Johnson, GOA's Director of Federal Affairs, added, quote, The Stop Harassing Owners of Rifles Today, short act, will repeal elements of the archaic National Firearms Act, or the NFA. I'm sure a lot of you guys know all about that which the Biden ATF is using to justify their pistol ban and amnesty registration plan, a policy change that affects millions of law-abiding gun owners and does nothing to curb rising crime. GOA is a proud to support the SHORT Act, which will protect millions of gun owners, halt these anti-gun infringements, and restore liberty. GOA is grateful to Representative Clyde and Senator Marshall for leading this no-compromise legislation to restore long-lost Second Amendment rights. And... I think that there is a very good support. I think there's very good intent. Like I just read to you, Eric Pratt, the, C the SVP, and Aiden Johnson, Director of Federal Affairs. You can tell this is angled in a proper way, but is it going to have the juice to continue when the Republicans have full control and they can right. deliver or not deliver on their promises? That's what I throw back to you, sir. Yeah, absolutely. And so GOA is backing this. They have to back this. And why do they have to back this? Because they want to support these politicians mm -hmm. that are introducing these bills, right? So, you know, there, there's no fault in the GOA backing this. I would expect mm -hmm. them to back this. I back this. It just, I know it won't pass, right? So, <laughs> right. you know, so it, you, you can't come down on GOA for saying, hey guys, we support this 100%. Of course they do. It's no compromise. This is reasonable, yep. justified legislation to restore rights that have been stolen from us. But, you know, Go back to 2016 and the lead up to the election of 2016, Trump could not have pandered harder to the Second Amendment community than Absolutely. he did. I mean, Absolutely. he was at the NRA convention. Boy, your gun rights are safe with me. I am Mr. Pro-Gun. This is going to be, you know, the greatest presidency ever for gun rights. And, you know, come with me. I love the 2A community. His son, who is a true 2A advocate, uh, Trump Jr., um, you know, he was at all the shows and you know everything, pushing it really, really hard to the 2A community. Had two full years of Trump and control of the House and the Senate. And what did they do for gun owners? Where was our short act? Where was our you know hearing protection act? Where were where was getting anything done pro-gun act during those two years? Mm -hmm. It was nowhere to be seen. If anything, yep. in those four years, all we got was a bump stock ban. And then we also and got be audio snippets saying. Uh, you know what? Take the guns now, due process later in support of red flag laws. Yep. That's what we got. So I'm not convinced by these bills. And to me, it, put, it has a real sour taste in my mouth because I already know what happens when the Republicans have full control and they've been pandering to the gun community to get elected and what they actually do post-election when they do win. A whole lot of nothing, at yep. least in recent history. I hope that trend changes. I hope shows like this can motivate our audience to contact their reps and say, hey, great bill. You better stick to it. Otherwise, we're voting you out. And that mm -hmm. message has to be communicated to those representatives. Otherwise, when they do get power, they're going to move on to other things like how much money can I get for my, you know, my constituents so I can build new bridges? That's what becomes their most important issue. Yep. And so, put, their, put their big fancy name on it. Yeah, and put a fancy name on it, come up with some cool words to support the acronym, and boom, we're off to the races. Listen, Tim, if there's an acronym, I'm on board. So yeah, that's, that's <laughs> one of my requirements. Who doesn't but like I, a good acronym? My I favorite's mean, radar, because good... no matter which way you read it, it's radar. That's good. That's that's totally true. That's amazing. That, <laughs> that I, there's took a some word real work, going, man. Going, going back and forward the same way, I, there's a word for that in the English language, and I can't remember it right now, but... One of the really important things that I think we need to really hone in on is two things that you just said. First of all, for anybody who is saying like, oh, this is a pro-Trump, not pro, not uh, not Trump thing. That's not what this is about. No, this is not at all. visiting history. So what we're what we're referencing is what actually happened. Now, in the Trump presidency, 
We wouldn't have Bruin without the Trump presidency. We would without those three justices. We wouldn't have the Bruin decision. It would not have been a thing. Clarence Thomas yep. couldn't have had his way with all those, you know, those decisions and the follow ups. Absolutely but true. When you're focusing on specifically the legislation and the Republican habit to tend to fundraise and say, look what I'm doing for the Second Amendment when there's no risk and no push forward. That's the thing that I personally have a problem with. And if we if we're just doing more of that, we're not doing it right. And the last thing that you said was phenomenal. That's what this channel is about, pushing people to hold reps responsible for the things they put forward, for the things they do on their campaign trails. Because we have a memory. We have everything in our book. We have the Second Amendment. We have all the constitutional protections. We have a lot of things going for us. The only thing it takes is for us to remember what happened and drive action in the current. And I think that is an excellent place to continue this conversation. Yep. I would agree. You know, and one thing I would like to see in the comments down below, uh, one of the things that we can do is is potentially bring on a representative from GOA to further explain this act, talk about it, talk about the politics behind it, talk about bills like this in general. So if you guys would like to see a follow up video to this one where we delve even deeper into this subject and have, you know, a subject matter expert, people that live and breathe this stuff on Capitol Hill involved in that conversation, let us know because we can certainly make that happen. So, yep, comments down below. Right Guys, down there. We, we can't thank you enough for tuning in and watching The Second Legacy. To us, this is a labor of love. We're doing this because we love our rights. I have children. Many of you watching probably have children. We have a legacy to pass on, a legacy of freedom. And we collectively, Braden and myself, we want to inspire you to help get into the fight to protect that legacy, to protect our culture, to pass that along to next, the next generation. Because if we don't make a stand, if we just sit back and let these things happen, bad things happen, then freedom is lost. Freedom is not free. Freedom requires constant maintenance. And that maintenance, for the most part, at least right now, is pretty simple. Get politically active. And that's what we hope to inspire you to do. And you can do that by like, sharing, and subscribing our videos. Check back frequently. And if you have ideas for any type of content that you'd like to see us discuss, you can always make those comments down below because we love reading those comments. And with that being said, guys, thank you for watching today and we'll see you in the next video.